good morning students so up till now we have discussed uh, the what is transient in a power system also uh, the different causes of transient in a power system in that we have discussed the internal and external causes like lightning and switching surges uh, in the next part uh, we have discussed uh, basics uh, transient in a basic circuit like uh, in ac circuit uh, what is the effect of a transient in dc circuit we have discussed a simple r load c load l load and the rl rc and series rc circuit so uh, up till now we have discussed the basics on fundamentals of the transient now let us discuss the traveling wave on transmission line so as you know that a transmission line is a distributed parameter circuit and the distributing the features of a such a circuit it's its ability to support the traveling waves of the voltage and current so a circuit with distributed parameter has a finite velocity of electromagnetic field propagation so as you can see in such circuit the change in a voltage and a change in a current owing to its switching and the lightning and this switching and the lightning do not occur simultaneously so in all part of the circuit but spread in the form of a traveling wave or in the form of a traveling surge <coughs> so that thing i have told you at the starting that the voltage surges and the current surges will traveling in a transmission line so as far as our uh, we can uh, say this figure let's say it is a pi section of a long transmission line and in long transmission line the parameter is distributed you can see here is l1 c1 l2 c2 up to ln cn and the last but not least l minus ln minus 1 and cn minus 1 which is connected to let's say this is a load connected so a transmission line uh, first is not energized at all now if it is energized this is due to the presence of distributed parameter when switch s is closed at that point the inductance l1 acts as a open circuited and c1 as a short circuited now at the same instant the next section cannot be discharged because the voltage across the capacitor c1 is zero so unless the capacitor c1 is charged to some value the charging of c2 through this inductor l2 is not possible which will take some finite time so the same is applied to the third section and so on okay so we see that the voltage at the successive section all the session build up gradually so it is not build up instantaneously but it will build up gradually first the c1 is charged then the c2 then c3 c4 up to cn so this gradual build up of voltage over transmission line can be regarded as a voltage wave in a traveling form from one end to the another end and the gradual charging of the capacitance is due to the associated current wave and which is accomplished by a voltage wave set up by magnetic field and due to which the reflection and refraction happen at the terminal at the junction in a circuit now this refraction and refraction will uh, going to understand later but now the understand the concept of traveling wave when the parameter are distributed in a transmission line so how the voltage surge or voltage wave and current wave is going to travel from the one end to the another end or we can say from the sending end to the receiving end okay now let's say when the switch is closed so when we are switching this switch when switch is closed at that time the current i1 will flow through the l1 and c1 in circuit as you can see here l1 and c1 are in series so at that time generating end of line is suddenly by a voltage v let's say the voltage here across this is v so by suddenly increasing to v by closing the switch s so current i1 so current let's say in this case the current is i1 so current i1 in first loop is given by c1 which is the capacitor c1 
and the current can be given by C1 multiplied by dV by dt. Okay, so now we can say that the V1 is nothing but the potential to which capacitor C is raised due to the charging effect of the current. Okay, this will be found by subsequent charging of capacitor C2, C3, C4 up to Cn. This electrical field is established as a consequence to a traveling wave from the generating ends toward the remote end of a transmission line. Now the magnetic field is set up due to the displacement of current 2. So the voltage wave and the current wave are traveling in the direction of a power flow. The potential at any point in a transmission line is utilized for over overcoming the EMF, obviously. So the consider, let's say, consider at any point, let's say this point is nothing but P. So consider any point which is P, which is X kilometer away from the sending end. So at that point, so at that point, the magnetic flux linkage is given by, so if you want to find, let's say here the point P is there and we want to find the magnetic flux linkage up to this point, that can be given by L1 multiply by Ix, multiply by the distance, which is the, let's say, this distance up to this point P is nothing but X. Then in that case, the magnetic flux linkage up to that point is P given by L1 multiply by Ix multiply by X. X is the distance in kilometer. So from that we can write the rate of change of flux. Okay, and the rate of change of flux is nothing but the potential difference at that point. And that is given by Vx is equal to Ix L1 and dx by dt. Now x is the distance. So dx by dt will give us the velocity. Okay, so Vx is equal to Ix multiplied by L1 into V. Now <coughs> V is the velocity of wave propagation which is given in terms of a kilometer per second. Now similarly we can write for Ix2. So Ix is nothing but the current <coughs> which is Vx multiplied by C1 and it is given by dx by multiplied by dx by dt. <coughs> so it is vx multiplied by c1. This is nothing but the velocity v. Let's say this is equation number 13. Now multiply both these equation. Equation number 12 and 13 will have vx multiplied by ix. The so left hand side will be vx ix is equal to ix into vx l1 into c1. v into v will be v square. So vx ix l1 c1 multiplied by v square. Now Vx and Ix will be cancelled from both the sides. So V square is equal to 1 divided by L1 into C1. So if we generally we can take L1 is equal to L, C1 is equal to C. So V square is equal to 1 divided by LC. Here V is nothing but the velocity of the wave propagation. So if you want to find the velocity of wave propagation in a transmission line, then it will be V is equal to under root LC. Okay, this is V square. If you want to find V, then we will be 1 under root LC. So for overhead line, overhead transmission line, L is given by 2 into 10 raise to minus 7. This all you already know what is the value of L and what is the value of C in overhead transmission line. For underground cable, the value will be different. Okay, it will be 2 into 10 raise to minus 7 LN R by R. Here it is D by R. Okay, we will see it later too. So put the value of L and C in this equation. So we can find the value of velocity of wave propagation in an overhead transmission line. So just put L is equal to here and C is here. Then we will have 4 pi epsilon multiplied by 10 raised to minus 7. Now put the value of epsilon and equate the value of V. So V is nothing but 3 multiplied by 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Now this is the velocity of light and this means the velocity of the propagation of traveling wave over the overhead line equal to the velocity of light. Okay, so make sure you remember this term that the velocity of traveling wave in a transmission line is same as the velocity of light. Now let us divide the equation number 12 and 13 let me just show you what is the equation number 12 which is vx is equal to ix l1 into v 
and ix is equal to vx c1 by v so divide equation number 12 by 13 then it will be vx by ix ix by vx l1 by c1 and we will we will get cancelled that is why here you can see vx by x ix by vx l1 by c1 so now this v goes this side ix goes this side so it will be v by ix all square is equal to l1 by c1 so ultimately vx by ix is equal to under root l1 by c1 so as the ratio vx by ix gives an impedance in terms of the constant of the transmission line circuit and actually depends on the actual configuration of the system okay so this impedance is referred to as a natural impedance of a transmission line and it is also known as the surge impedance of a transmission line so z0 so we we can rip, uh, write vx by is is equal to z0 which is equal to surge impedance of transmission line under root l1 by c1 so in general we can say z0 is equal to l by c where l is inductance of the line per kilometer per phase and c is nothing but capacitance of the line per kilometer per phase okay so now put the value of l and c for over a transmission line that is also right here l is equal to this and c is equal to this put this value in z0 so we'll have z0 is equal to 16 natural logarithmic of d by r ohm okay so if you put the value of d and r which is mutual gm uh, gmr and self gmr or self gmd mutual gmd and self gmd then in that case you find the value of z0 okay and usually for over a transmission line the value of z0 or the surge impedance load uh, surge impedance is around 300 to 500 okay so 500 is assumed for the surge impedance of a over a transmission line same way if you calculate z04 underground cable in that case you will get around 40 to 50 ohms okay so in that case you have to put the value of l and c so for uh, underground cables l is equal to there that will be different uh, than the over a transmission line c is also going to be different because now here here it is so let us just discuss about the velocity of wave propagation that we have discussed for over a transmission line in that case we get that v is equal to 3 into 8 tan raised to 8 meter per second but for underground cables it is v is equal to under root lc where l is 2 into tan raised to minus 7 natural logarithmic of capital r by r okay so the thing is different is r here it will be r where in case of over a transmission line it is capital d okay it is mutual gmd i have shown it is small d but it should be capital d you can see here it is capital d the mutual gmd small r stands for self gmd so l will be this and value of c will be this if you put this value of l and c in this equation you will get the velocity of wave propagation for underground cables is 3 multiplied by 10 raised to 8 divided by epsilon r meter per second so if the value of epsilon r varies from 2.5 to 4 in general cases for underground cables so assume that the uh, epsilon r the value of epsilon r is 3 so under root 3 will be 1.71 so 3 divided by 1.71 will be less than 3 multiplied by 10 raised to 8 so the value of v will be lesser in case of underground cable so velocity of wave propagation in over a transmission line is always more than underground cables because here 3 multiply by 10 raised to 8 is going to be divided by some positive integer so it will be varies from varies as varies the value of epsilon r so up to this point uh, we just uh, stop right here and uh, the next uh, which is uh, will proceed in next part so stay tuned for next section thank you